like Marc Jacobs Daisy. I used to wear that when that first came out in like 2008. I used to wear that all the time. And I remember I was like early in my career. And when I smell it, it reminds me of this particular place I was working at at the time. All of these are pricey, I'm not gonna lie. Do you get that with fragrances? I always say this with fragrances. You can attach a memory, a memory to a fragrance. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. If you are into perfume, or you're watching this and you want to know what's a really good one that's like a really strong perfume that's gonna last me all day. And by the way, for any guys watching, a lot of what I'm gonna show you is actually unisex. So I'm gonna go through as I show you some of my favorite perfumes and let you know which ones are unisex. Of course you can wear any of these, doesn't really matter. But if you're, if you want more of a unisex fragrance, then I've got those to show you. So the collection that I've got, I've got a massive perfume collection and I really need to slow down buying perfumes. I just get hooked on them. I love to smell strongly of perfume and I very often take my perfume out with me in the day and I like top it up as I go, um, which is another reason why I'm getting rid of my small bags because a lot of these perfumes don't fit in the smaller bags. But that's something that I'm really into. And the perfumes I've got, there are some that are more mass produced, I would describe, but actually a lot of what I've got are from kind of top tier lines from brands, as well as from unique niche brands that only do very expensive perfumes that are made out of very premium ingredients. So one of my favorite brands, which I'm new to, is I've got two actually that I'm gonna show you from the same brand. This is Fragrance Dubois, and their packaging is amazing. Let me show you. So this is the, the box, and I'll go through some of their fragrances as well and how it works, because they have different lines. So they have different, like, families, if you want to call it that, of fragrances that are all part of a little collection um, where they all work with each other. Of course, what I like about their fragrances is that you can uh wear more than one at once so i very often spray on both of mine at the same time but this is the box all shiny and then you open it sorry about my nail by the way i lost the nail and you don't know what pain is until you lose a false nail but here we open the box and then it folds down at the front and you have got this is velvet and if I lift this out and show you, this is honestly such a good self gift or a gift for someone else, of course, a gift for someone else. And then you open it and this is the fragrance inside. And all of their bottles are faceted. And what that means is they're cut like a diamond, so there are no sharp edges. And it means that when you've got the bottle placed down on your vanity table or your cupboard or wherever you keep your fragrances, the light shines through the, the bottle, but also this lid is gold plated. And all of the little black crystals you can see around here, these are Swarovski crystals and they are all hand inlaid in. So this is really a very, very exclusive brand, I want to say. And I've got two of their fragrances. So the first one I've got is Voyage at Paris. And this is, um, it it's, was created by them in homage to their 10 year anniversary and their roots in Paris. And really, when you smell this fragrance, it connotes glossy magazines, um, Parisian style, French style, everything that is Paris you really get a hit of when you smell this. And I've written down some of the notes uh, in this just to give you an idea. So it's got top notes are rum, orange blossom. There's also jasmine in here, honey, oud, vanilla, and oak. So if you like oud fragrances, which I do, they're like my personal favorite. If you like an oud fragrance, this is it. And it's a sweet oud. It's not that kind of very heavy, very intense oud and it lasts all day. Now the second one that I actually pair up with that, what have I done with it? Here it is, is this. Now this has got a different label on the front, as you can see. Uh, so this is from their, I think their travel line is possibly what it's called. They have like a London one, a New York one, um, and each one is very evocative of the place that it represents. But this one here, 
This is called cavort. So cavort is about those very excited butterflies in your stomach feelings that you get when you first meet someone. Those, as I say, those exciting, those um, joyous feelings that you get when you first start dating or when you first met someone and you're like, okay, I really like this person. That really is, is the, are those feelings in a bottle. It's joyous, it makes you feel good when you wear it. So some of the notes in this, I've written them down. We've got, it's like a woody aphrodisiac. It contains cinnamon and geranium, but it also contains like sensual leather and creamy soft sandalwood. It smells, it doesn't have an oud, it kind of, if you like oud, I think you'd like this, but it's not as strong as an oud. It's a, it's a fragrance that lasts all day, but it's more delicate than an oud. You really do get that cinnamon coming through and it's just a beautiful fragrance. And what I do is I layer these two in the day. I just spray both on and both of them together work so well. So this may not be a brand that you've heard of actually. They're quite um, very, very luxury. You can buy them in Harrods, Harvey Nichols, Selfridges. Uh, the other thing before I move on that I thought I would show is also from Fragrance de Bois. And if you are interested, but you don't wanna like go and buy a whole bottle and then you might not like it, try this. This is their, I've actually taken one out <laughs> to, to wear. This is in my bag. Um, I keep these in my handbag, but this is a sample pack that you can get. Um, and I think it's about 90 pounds, but it's got a lot of their top fragrances in there. So give that a try if you are, if you're like, yeah, I kind of sound interested in this brand, but I'm not sure, try the um, sample set. Now moving on to another brand. Um, this one is another one of my favorites is Kaali, which is from, you know, Huda Beauty's sister created this line. So I really like the perfumes. There is a downside though, and this is personal to me. You might completely disagree, but this is just my personal thoughts. I don't find they last. I love how they smell, but I find they wear off really quickly. Now, the first one I got into is this. This is Eden Juicy Apple, and it literally smells like heaven. It smells apple -y, it smells fresh, it smells fruity, it smells youthful, it's just gorgeous. And I liked it so much that I got, um, for Cyber Weekend, I got like the sample set so I could keep this in my bag. And it also happened to come with Vanilla, which I like, I like a vanilla. It came with Deja Vu, white flower. Don't love floral so much. And then it also came with Invite Only, Amber, like Amber. And I like all of them, but as I say, the downside for me is they don't last. So I do still wear them, but I just carry these around in my bag and I'm constantly touching them up. Whereas with a lot of the other fragrances, like with the fragrance Dubois and with some Guerlain that I'm gonna come on to, you don't need to do that. You literally just put your perfume on in the morning and you're done. Oh, and by the way, the fragrance Dubois is for him and for her. So, um, unisex. Kaali, I think is like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's unisex, but I think some of their stuff is, like vanilla, for example. Vanilla is definitely unisex. It's, it's sweet, it's very vanilla actually. It's gorgeous. Um, I, I mean, I think to be honest, wear what you want to wear. Um, but yeah, I was just saying, if you're watching this and you're like, no, I specifically wanna know what's unisex, then that's it. Um, the next one is another one of my favorites. It's Atkinson's Oud Save the Queen. So David has got, D David and I, because we wear a lot of Oud, we very often, with the exception of this one, we share each other's fragrances. And we do it, as I say, because a lot of them are unisex. Like with the exception of like Kaali and stuff like that, they're unisex. But this one, you get Oud Save the Queen and Oud Save the King. And this, this is like your typical heavy Oud. Only it has got a sweetness to it. Um, there is actually nothing left in this. I need to get some more. But it's very, um, it's very typical Oud. But if you, the reason why I got this and then David ended up getting the King one is because I love Oud, but I didn't want that really heavy, like really, really, really heavy, almost 
bitter oud. I wanted something that had sweetness in it. And I think this has got a bit of rose in it and a bit of vanilla. So it just livens it up a bit. Uh, the next one, which is another favourite of mine, is for, from Guerlain. And they've changed the bottle on this now. This is Cure Beluga, which I think translates into like leather. So it smells... It, if I could say two things, it smells like suede, leather and vanilla. It, I've got to put some of this on. Should I put some of this on? I haven't actually worn this one in ages. Yeah, it's, it's those two things. It's very vanilla. It's very amber. I don't know if it's got amber in it. Does it have amber in it? I've actually written down. Sweet white suede is all it said on the website. But I would say if, again, if you like, if you like the heaviness of an oud, I think you'd like this. It smells, do any of you, maybe it's a UK thing, do any of you remember Play-Doh? You know that, you know that stuff you give to kids and they can like shape it into little models? Do you remember that smell of, that vanilla smell of Play-Doh? I don't know about you, but I really liked that smell. Um, this is a little bit Play-Doh, but in a very grown up, leathery kind of way. All of these are pricey, I'm not gonna lie, but I would rather spend a lot of money on something that's gonna, like I've had this probably like five years and I keep them all in a dark cupboard so that they don't go bad. Um, in fact, Fragrance Dubois told me that certainly with their fragrances, I was like, how long do they last? Whether you keep them in, they said, don't keep them in direct sunlight. But they said they can last like five to ten years and actually with some fragrances they get better, some get worse, some get better. So don't keep a fragrance for like a year and think, oh, I better get rid of it. Some of them actually last. If you like the smell of it, keep wearing it. Yeah, that's really nice. And then um, I'm going to move on to a floral one that I actually don't like and I don't know why I bought it. I don't even like florals. And when I think about it, did I write down what was in this? I feel like I did, but I feel like I remember what's in this. This is from Louis Vuitton. And do I attempt to pronounce this? Attrape Revez? I can't do French. I'm so sorry if I've just annihilated that. But do you know why I don't like this? Okay, so you know Thierry Mugler, Angel? That fragrance, I used to wear that at university. And when I smell that now, it reminds me of anxiety. <laughs> like, do you get that with fragrances? I always say this with fragrances. You can attach a memory, a memory to a fragrance. And some fragrances, when I smell them, they take me back. Like Marc Jacobs Daisy. I used to wear that when that first came out in like 20, 2008 I used to wear that all the time and I remember I was like early in my career and when I smell it it reminds me of this particular place I was working at at the time it just takes me straight back and I get that with fragrances they really are evocative of things that have happened in the past good or bad well this one just reminds me of Angel when I smell it in the bottle it's beautiful but on my skin it turns into Angel Although maybe not as heavy as Angel, but it turns into that. Now, the notes in it, I should love this. It's cocoa, it's rose, Turkish rose. It's it's sweet, it's it's peony. It, but as I say, when I wear it, it just changes. And I've got a whole bottle and they engraved it for me. I've got my initials on it. Um, yeah, as I say, in the bottle, really like it. On me, really don't. Uh, another really great one, if you love Oud, this is another really good one. This is by a brand called Inetio, and the, brand, oh, the the perfume name is Side Effect, and it comes in this matte purple bottle with a gold plaque on the front, and I found this in Harrods, so Harrods have got like a really good perfume haul. Um, if you go into their cosmetic section, you can find like Kayali and Chanel Number no. 5 and Dior perfumes. But they have got a perfume room and it's all of the speciality fragrances. So, for example, that's where you would find Fragrance Dubois. That's where you would find... 
Atkinson's Oud Save the King and Queen. It's where you would find Guerlain, Cure Beluga, but it's not where you would find Tom Ford from memory or anything like that. Uh, you know, you, that's, it's where the speciality fragrance section is. That's where I found this and I smelt it and I was just like, this is so nice. And this is one that David and I share. So this I would say is unisex as well. Um, and also bear in mind that on your skin, a lot of these will change, but what's in this is tobacco, vanilla and rum, but it's got that oud undertone to it, that oud base. Um, it's dark, it's, it has got a sweetness. It's got, it's got vanilla, but it's not sugary sweet. Now for three more, no, four more of my favorites. One that I'm so disappointed they don't sell anymore. Do you remember the MAC fragrances? Why did they stop doing them? Do you remember Turquatic, the blue one? I've still got some left and I saved that. Again, that's another fragrance when I smell it. It reminds me of my first job, but it was a job I actually liked, so I don't mind re-wearing that, even though it takes me straight back. I'm like, no, I like the fragrance and I liked where I used to work, so we're all good. This is called Velvet Teddy, so like the lipstick, and it smells, oh my God. This is seductive. This is heavy chocolate, caramel, toffee, butterscotch, vanilla. They, that is it. It is sensual, seductive. When I wear it, both men and women say to me, wow, what are you wearing? It is like hypnotic, captivating. It's beautiful. And I've got that much left and I'm saving it. This I wear on evenings out. This is definitely an evening fragrance. With the others, I think you could go day or night, but this is definitely evening. This, which is another favorite, this is from the Armani Privé line, and this is Vert Malachite, so green Malachite. And it's very, if you like jasmine, I think that this is a really good one. Now, I've written down what's in this. It's got orange, sandback, jasmine, elang elang, lily and vanilla. And I would say the note you really get through with this is the jasmine and the elang elang. And it's a beautiful fragrance, it's uplifting, it's very spring summer, um, it's very, it lasts. This is another one. We, I would say with everything I've shown you, even the MAC fragrance, it's only the Kaali fragrance that doesn't last. I've noticed. With the others, I can smell them all day. And this is one that I get that with. I can literally smell it all day. And then for the final two, I couldn't move on without mentioning some Tom Ford. This is Velvet Orchid and I've gone off, have I gone off this one a bit? Um, maybe a little bit. It is quite floral. Uh, do you know what? I used to like that. I don't like that anymore. And there's quite a lot left. Um, isn't that funny how you can go off things? That doesn't remind me of any times in particular though, so that's good. And then my final one is Linta D from, I think that's how you say it, from Givenchy. I've got both. I've got the original and I've got the burning Neroli one. The Neroli one is my favourite. But this is a really nice fragrance. The, the Neroli one I've got probably like six months old. This one is a couple of years old, but this still smells good. This still smells as good as when I first got it. And I can't, um, how would I describe that? I can smell Elang Elang in it. It's not, it doesn't smell overly floral. It, I don't really like floral fragrances. So most of what I've got are very woody, musky, but sweet. But I would always say my, fra my favorite notes are not being specific, but I like fruit, vanilla, and oud. They are like my favorite elements that I, I really like in a fragrance. So they're some of my favorites. I, as I've mentioned, I've got like a really big collection and I just wanted to pick out some of the, I didn't want to bore you all to tears. Um, this video is already going to be like 25 minutes long, but I hope that you have enjoyed this and that if you are in the market for a fragrance that it's given you some ideas and things that you might want to consider, um, definitely some of these are like massive 
favourites for me. I really like all of my fragrances. I really enjoy wearing them. But anyway, enough from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow in the next video.